Ms. Bazinski, you're you, recognized. Thank you, Chairman Rouser, and thank you, Ranking Member Napolitano, uh, for holding this hearing today and to hear from members on our priorities for the upcoming reauthorization of WERDA. As a representative for Central and Southern Illinois, I have the honor of serving communities outside of St. Louis um, in the Metro East region, communities that have struggle, struggled with the consequences of inadequate infrastructure for far too long. In Cahokia Heights, local residents have been dealing with a flooding, sewage, and drinking water crisis for decades, eroding home values and putting folks' health and safety at risk. I was proud to secure an EPA coordinator to help us resolve this issue, and the Army Corps of Engineers has worked collaboratively with the state of Illinois to address this in the past. But our work is not done. And that's why I'm requesting additional support in our next Water Resources Development Act. In WERDA 2024, I'm requesting a feasibility study of the Spring Lake project recommended in the East St. Louis and Vicinity Ecosystem Restoration and Flood Damage Reduction Project report to advance this structural project to a pre-construction pre engineering design phase. This will help communities in my district with flood resilience and reduction and ensure their homes are protected. In addition to completing the study, the flooding issue can be mitigated by modifying the scope and authorization ceiling for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers response. By adding stormwater management to the existing scope of water and wastewater infrastructure assistance, the Army Corps of Engineers will have increased ability to remedy flooding issues as they arise, as well as mitigate future issues. Raising the ceiling from 100 to $200 million will also allow the Army Corps enhanced capability to respond to these issues. The Mississippi River also serves as a vital waterway to growers and producers in my congressional district, allowing them to get their foods, their goods to market. The bipartisan infrastructure law funded seven inland waterway construction projects. Even so, infrastructure law funds alone will be insufficient to complete any of these critical projects that Congress intended the IIJA fund to complete. Unless modified in WERDA 2024, the disparity between projected costs reflected in BIL funding levels and subsequent real world project costs threaten to jeopardize and delay critical ongoing and planned capital improvements that are desperately and urgently needed to modernize our nation's antiquated inland waterways transportation system, further delaying economic and environmental benefits. Consistent with IIJA congressional intent, I request that we adjust funding levels to ensure that the federal government continues to cover 100% of the cost of the seven inland waterways construction and major rehabilitation projects. The requests I highlighted today, alongside the others I intend to submit to the committee, will help ensure that the constituents in my district are protected from floods, that the Army Corps of Engineers is well equipped to address flooding issues, and that our waterways construction and rehabilitation infrastructure is fully funded. Thank you very much, Chairman and Ranking Member, for the opportunity to testify here today, and I thank you in advance for considerations of my requests. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you very much for your testimony. Any questions? Seeing none, thank you again.